This is a Larry Fedorik podcast. News Talk 610 CKTV. We had a wonderful visit. She was strong, lucid. Uh, funny, uh, still. Funny. She and I were needling each other. And the <laughs> doctor came in and she turned to the doctor and said, you want to know why George W. is the way he is? And the doctor looked somewhat surprised. She said, because I drank and smoked when I was pregnant with him. <laughs> I believe that happened. I believe that exchange took place, knowing the sense of humor that Barbara Bush had. And as you may have been hearing, the children of George H.W. and Barbara Bush uh, were out today talking to media and reminiscing and uh, uh, telling amusing anecdotes and things because that's what she would have wanted. Barbara Bush passing at age 92. We heard at the beginning of the week that she was failing health and that she had refused any further medical treatment. Our guest is known as the First Ladies Man, author of uh, Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volumes 1 and 2. Andrew Oak joining us. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Larry. Pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Thank you for coming on. I hope you heard that little anecdote that uh, W just told. It sounds like it really did happen, uh, happen knowing Barbara Bush, right? No, it's, it is, and that's a perfect uh, clip to play, and it, it kind of goes along with one of my favorite stories about an interview she did when she was First Lady, and she was asked about what she thought about the criticisms that she wasn't a particularly attractive woman, and she said that she was a fine-looking woman, she just didn't dress very well. <laughs> so this, this self-deprecating humor, this knowing of what her self-worth was and what her strong points were and how she could be effective is why we're all celebrating her today and why this legacy will live out long, longer than all of us. And, and she never wanted the spotlight. She was in the spotlight, but she didn't gravitate towards it. She just let her platforms and her positions and her work speak for itself very humbly, and that's what allowed her to kind of reach across the aisle and work in true bipartisan politics uh, fashion to be one of the most accomplished and, and prolific first ladies of all time, especially in her post-White House years. And she did have a project. She didn't want the spotlight, but she did fill the role very well of first lady, and, and she had programs. I think literacy was one of her uh, big uh, uh, programs she wanted to push through. Yeah, no, huge. The, the, the Bush Literacy Foundation and the events that they hold at uh, College Station, Texas, where the uh, Bush 41 Museum and Library, uh, it's, it's, they raise billions with a B, billions of dollars, 40 to 50 some million dollars a year uh, for literacy, and that affects all of us. That's men, women, children, boys and girls, and when more people can read and more people can write, that makes productive people across the board. So, I mean, you know, that's one of the best ways to help humanity help itself and she didn't tout those figures and didn't, didn't bask in that success. There's a beautiful story, a funny story, about her granddaughter, Barbara, her namesake, was very boastful after a tennis match at some point in time, and she got a firm scolding from her grandmother that said, you just, you just take the win and you take that victory, and she's always quick to emphasize, no matter how many things you win, trophies, elections, titles, or, 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 or any of that stuff, it doesn't compare to the time that you spend with loved ones, the time that you spend with family, your husbands, your wives, your children. She was such a great family person to be able to ride that fence, to be able to divide that line between personal and professional is another one of her amazing qualities. And what she did, and I think I heard you mention this on television this morning, was she scrapbooked, she collected a lot of, and not only public life stuff, but personal life stuff that, that she kept. It's a virtual history. Yeah, really. History. Very much so. Very much so. There, at, the, at the Bush Library, again, in, in College Station, Texas, they have 60, 70, 80-some scrapbooks where Mrs. Bush has been working on these from the time she started dating H.W. In, in the 40s up until as recently as possibly, you know, yesterday or, or, or last week. You know, she was actively adding to these scrapbooks hundreds, thousands of photographs and articles and poems and snippets and Think about if we went to your family and, and looked in your photo albums and all that stuff, how well would we get to know you? I got to look through these photo albums and see these intimate moments of a family that we all think we know so well, but we, we know the public bushes. To know the private bushes and see them acting the same as you and I would, wearing you know funny sweaters and hats around Christmas and 
teaching kids how to ride their bicycles and, and, and family vacations and fishing trips and building snowmen and, and all the usual things that, that these people, uh, that we forget they're real people. You know, they, they, when you study the women as I have, they step out of the pages of history books and off of the oil paintings, and we learn how much they are human and how they win, they lose, they laugh, they love, they die. Uh, you know, they, they are real people, and when you take the politics out of it, you can humanize them in that fashion. I read today earlier a letter that was out there today from December of 1943 of uh, George H.W. to my darling Barr. He's uh, about to go to war in 1943, and it's an incredible letter, a love letter, even back all those years ago. And that's the other thing about Barbara and, and George Sr. is this relationship they maintained for the decades. For sure. I, I mean, they, she says it's the first boy she ever kissed, the only man she ever fell in love with. They were together 73, well, married 73 years. Together, I guess about 74 and a half. I think they were engaged a year after they went to a school dance in Andover, Massachusetts, while he was getting ready to go to the war as one of the youngest naval pilots, and, uh, and she was in college. And um, to spend a lifetime so viewed in the public eye on that world stage, to do so much and still have this tight-knit family, Barbara Bush, as called the enforcer by her son, George W., gave her that, <laughs> that nickname, was truly that. I mean, she was the matriarch of one of the most successful political families and dynasties in our nation's history. Did she get her due while she was first lady? Did people really understand the kind of person she was, or did that come later? No, I think they did. You know, as all of these first ladies, when we go back and look at them, and, and more will be revealed, I'm, I'm sure, in the coming days, we really begin to realize how valuable they were and all the good work that they did. But Mrs. Bush was always well-liked. She was liked as the wife of a vice president. She was liked as the wife of an ambassador going to open up dignitary relations with China uh, when they went over there. Um, before there was an embassy, that, that's one of Mrs. Bush's favorite scrapbooks, is her China scrapbook. And and we all picture Barbara Bush as 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 the, the grandmother, as the white-haired lady with the pearls and the gowns and the things like that. There's pictures in these photo albums. One of my favorite pictures of Barbara is, is her in Beijing at some sort of a, a martial arts exercise group. And she's in a group with a whole of a gymnasium with a whole bunch of people wearing sneakers, trousers, and a sweatshirt. I, I, no pearls, you know, <laughs> and smiling just ear to ear. You, you just saw a woman really enjoying herself. It was one of the only times the Bushes were able to travel or still do the work that they were used to doing and loved to do, but they didn't have their children with them. Their children had been uh, out of the house at this point, grown, or uh, late teenagers, early 20s type of thing, where they didn't have to take the children along. And there wasn't a huge staff and too much uh, of, of um, specific work to do. They were basically there to enjoy the country and, and open up these these uh, 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 diplomatic uh conversations and engagements, yeah. and they did a fine job in it, and it's reflected in that photo album. It's wonderful. I want to see those albums. I, I want to go to this museum the more I hear about it now, or the Bush Library. Uh, by the way, I only found out today that these were never real pearls that she wore. Well, I, you know, I'm, I, and she does say that, and I, and I believe her. Okay. I'm sure she had some real pearls somewhere. You would think. Uh, uh, that, that she, that she, but the ones that she paraded around were more costume jewelry, and that gets back to the to the, you know, she just, she just was a real person. You know, all the people that I know that worked in the White House, and this goes to uh, Secret Service agents, chefs, stewards, butlers, people that worked for multiple administrations, and that's the key to what I'm about to say, is that these people know the first couple as they're working behind the scenes. So when these people are asked, Who's your favorite first lady, or who are you really upset to see move out? Their answer, nine times out of ten, hands down, Barbara Bush. Mm. This woman was just loved by everyone, and it's because she was so genuine. What you saw, what you got. If you crossed her, you, you got the business end of her. But every other aspect of her was just this lovely woman that was a pleasure to deal with in almost every angle, every aspect. She remembered people's names, uh, people's children's names, pets' names.
They were always good to all the people around them at the holidays. They remembered birthdays. They knew when someone was having trouble at home or one of their kids was having trouble in school and knew when to give just a little care present for no reason other than to say, I'm thinking about you. And this is the type of, of person and the type of work that would continue up through her final days. And, and, and again, why we celebrate the legacy of this woman. I think we know where kindler, gentler came from, from uh, when H.W. said it, probably from uh, the influence of Barbara. It's amazing stuff. Andrew, thank you so much. Of course, anytime. Thanks for having me on, Larry. Andrew Oak, the First Lady's man. He's author of Unusual for Their Time, uh, written about many First Ladies. We talk about Barbara Bush today, obviously. Uh, author of Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies, Volumes 1 and 2.